It's hard to believe, only one week into 2026, and a model that might be the strongest open source video generation model, LTX2, is already released. So, what is LTX2? LTX2 is basically an AI superbrain that can write, direct, act, and even do sound design by itself. You just give it a paragraph of text, and it can directly generate a cinematic short film with very high image quality and perfectly synced audio. In this video, I'll give you a full tutorial of LTX2. I'll show you how to install it, how to run it on low VRAM, and how to use it. I'll also share a lot of practical tips along the way, so make sure you watch until the end. After that, you'll know whether LTX2 is really the best option on PC right now. Hello everyone, I am Smart Vision. On this channel, I keep sharing the latest AI tutorials and practical tools. All the workflows, materials, and resources in this video are already uploaded to my Patreon. You can download them for free after registering. For my supporters, I also prepare more professional and more hardcore exclusive tools and knowledge. You're welcome to subscribe and support. All right, let's get started. First, update your NVIDIA driver. This is a must. Open the NVIDIA app, choose the studio version, and click install. Next, download the latest Comfy UI Windows portable version. Open the folder, you'll see a file called run, NVIDIA, GPU, bat. This is our launch file. We need to modify it. Right click, choose edit in notepad, and add reserve VRAM 4. This number means how much VRAM you leave for Windows. My GPU has 16 gigabytes VRAM. Windows uses about 4 gigabytes, so I leave 12 gigabytes for Comfy UI. You need to adjust this based on your GPU. If you only have 12 gigabytes VRAM, you can set it to 3 or 4. You can also use no VRAM, but that requires 64GB system RAM, because even with 12GB VRAM, LTX2 can use around 50GB RAM. After reserve VRAM, also add disable pinned memory, otherwise you'll get errors. There is also one more line of code to change. Open the file here, delete the original line or comment it out with a number, and add the new line. If this is too troublesome, you can just download the modified file from my Patreon and overwrite it. Next, install Comfy UI Manager. You can Google how to install it. To make it easier, I already prepared the file. Just put it into the Comfy UI root directory and double-click to install. After installation, double-click Run, NVIDIA, GPU, BAT to launch Comfy UI. Click Manager in the top right, then Custom Nodes Manager, search for LTX Video, select it, and click Install. After that, restart Comfy UI. For the models, we can click Templates on the left, and here you'll see Comfy UI LTX Video. Click into it, and you'll find several official workflows provided by the team. Thanks to the excellent optimization from NVIDIA and LTX Video, we can now run the full LTX2 model even on low VRAM GPUs, so in this demo, I'm going to use the full model directly. If you're looking for faster speed, you can also choose the distill model. It's a lighter version, runs faster, but the quality is slightly lower than the full model. According to the official guide, we can also download the LTX2 4-bit model. This version uses NVIDIA's latest technology to significantly reduce VRAM usage and improve performance, which is very friendly for low VRAM users. For the other models, just follow the official instructions, download them, and place them into the correct folders. Now the important part. There is a huge model called Gemma 3, used as the text encoder. Its size alone can kill most GPUs instantly, even the FP8 version. This is where many people get stuck with LTX2. So here you must use a lightweight model. Unsloth Gemma 312, BIT, BNB 4-bit. It only uses about 8 GB VRAM, and with BNB quantization, there's almost no quality loss. You can use it directly. You also need a special sampler. Open the Res2 GitHub page, 
follow the installation steps. Copy the git clone command. Make sure you have git installed. Then type cd comfy ui custom nodes and paste the command. After download, type cd dot dot a few times to go back. Then enter the next command. Remember to close comfy ui first. Press enter to install. Otherwise you'll get a permission error. Alright, now it should run. When I clicked run, a dialog popped up and scared me, I thought it was out of memory again. Turns out it was just missing bits and bytes. So I installed it and restarted comfy UI. Ran again, oh my god, another error. This time it was missing accelerate. Install it, restart. You might not get this error if it was already installed by other nodes. Finally, it runs. Let's check the result. Hello, boys. Hmm. This female knight doesn't seem to like me. She's talking with her eyes closed. And... Uh, that mighty dragon turned into a baby dragon. So cute, right? We can click templates on the left. Let's look at text to video. This is the official workflow. The first time you open it, it will ask you to download models. Just follow the prompt, or you can find the download links here on the side. Remember, here we do not use the Gemma 312B model. We use the Gemma 312B IT BNB 4-bit model that I mentioned earlier. Now let's look at the workflow. First, it loads the model. This is the LTX2 FP8 model, basically lossless. This model also contains the video and audio VAE, so they split it here. Then here is an upscaler. Why is there an upscaler? You'll see in a moment. And here is the Gemma 312B IT BNB 4-bit model we just downloaded. These are the basic video settings, like width, height, length, and frame rate. We can change width and height to 720p first. If we want HD later, we can use other lighter models, so we don't get out of memory. Here are two LoRa loaders. You can think of LoRa as small weapons for big models, it enhances specific abilities, but the official workflow bypasses them, they're not required. If you're interested, you can download and try them. Here you can use the official camera control LoRa. Click here, it will open Hugging Face, and you can download it. For the prompt, here we have positive prompt and negative prompt. There is also an enhancer here. It uses Gemma 3 to help optimize your prompt. Very thoughtful, very good. But if you think your prompt is already good enough, you can delete this node or press Ctrl plus B to bypass it. That will increase inference speed. Click into this subgraph. One thing to note, by default, LTX2 first scales the video to 0.5. You can see the whole workflow is two-stage sampling. First generate, then upscale, and finally return to the size we set. Here you can see two latents. These are basically the raw materials for generation. One is for video, one is for audio. Just remember, there are two lines. This sampler stage one is basically the core of LTX2. You can see the CFG, which is the prompt strength, is set to 4 to increase control. Here it uses LTX V scheduler to generate a special parameter called Sigma. What is Sigma? Sigma is basically the noise level in the video. Adjusting Sigma means letting the model work harder at the stage where it's easiest to shape. Then it goes through LTX2's special sampling, and we get the result. The second stage is the upscale module. It's mainly 2x upscaling. The scale is fixed, you can't change it. CFG is set to 1 because it uses the Distill LoRa acceleration model. There is also an upscale model here. They are used together, you don't need to choose. And here is manual sigmas, some internal super parameters. Honestly, they probably didn't even need to expose this to us. Maybe they're keeping something in reserve. Alright, here I wrote a test prompt. A beautiful woman is speeding on a motorcycle through a steampunk street at night, with many street lights along the road. This prompt is used to test LTX2's understanding of the physical world. Overall, the result is excellent. It basically matches the prompt description, it is nighttime and it is raining, which was probably added by the enhancer. There are rain sounds and motorcycle sounds as well, which is fine. However, 
The downside is that the texture quality feels a bit rough. Also, for some reason, there are two iron wires on both sides of the motorcycle. It seems that during rendering, LTX2 magically transformed the stone patterns on the road into iron wires. Very impressive. Alchemy, indeed. In terms of time, generating a 10 second 720p video with audio took 513 seconds, which is still acceptable. Next, let's test a sci-fi scenario. The prompt is, a group of people watching a concert on the surface of the moon. This prompt has a logical flaw, there is no air in space, so you cannot hear sound, and people cannot stand on the moon wearing normal clothes. Let's see how LTX2 handles this. Now look at the result. LTX2 correctly makes people wear spacesuits. Except the guitarist is extremely dedicated, sticking his hands out in sub-zero temperatures to play the guitar. The drummer also loves to surprise everyone. And yes, sound can apparently travel in space. Very impressive. The downside is also obvious, the aesthetic quality is not very good, so I still recommend using image to video, where we can control the image quality in advance. Image to video. The overall structure is basically the same as text to video. The only difference is that the initial latent comes from our image. The method is to use VAE to project the image into LTX2's latent space. Let's use the I2V workflow to test some effects. First, I want to test a combat scene that 1.2 still cannot handle well. The bow drawing action. The image shows a female warrior drawing a bow with a flaming arrow. The prompt is... A female warrior draws her bow and shoots a flaming arrow. Look at the result. Hey arrow, don't run away by yourself. You haven't been shot yet, just kidding. It looks like the motion is very smooth, and the arrow is successfully shot. This is much better than WAN 2.2. However, LTX2 may not fully understand the physical properties of a flaming arrow and how to represent it correctly. That's fine. At least LTX2 does the archery motion very well about out of memory there is one important thing to note regarding out of memory issues for some reason the i2v workflow is more likely to cause oom than t2v there are two solutions the first solution is to increase the reserved vram value which means leaving less vram for comfy ui because ltx2 has a vram usage spike during the upscaling stage reducing that peak can significantly lower the chance of running into oom the second solution is to reduce the video width and height. Also, you may notice that the background music contains a lot of white noise. Another test. The image shows a girl standing on the edge of a cliff, surrounded by a huge waterfall, with some flying dolphins in the sky. The prompt is, a girl is dancing, with dolphins flying around her. Look at the result. Oh my god, this is terrifying. The person has turned into a spinning top, it looks like a horror movie. This is LTX2 style dancing, okay. From the video quality perspective, I feel it is still somewhat underwhelming. It does not look as elegant as WAN 2.2, right? From the audio perspective, we can hear dolphin sounds, but we cannot hear the massive waterfall in the background. This indicates that LTX2 is more suitable for videos with clear, distinct sound sources. You can try adding more detailed sound descriptions in your prompts to improve the results. Similarly, we will use the official template. When opening it, you may encounter missing node issues. This is easy to fix. Open the manager in the top right corner and click install missing nodes to install the missing nodes. At the same time, you also need to download the three LoRa files shown on the left. After downloading, simply place them into the model's LoRa's folder. There are three ways to perform video-to-video -video conversion here, pose, canny edge, and depth. Since there is nothing particularly special about the other methods, I will only demonstrate pose. First, press Ctrl plus B to bypass the nodes above. At the same time, you may see an error saying bypass enhancer cannot be found. This node cannot be located, so we can simply delete it. Then press Ctrl plus B again to bypass the enhancer node. Here, I imported the archer video of the female warrior from earlier, but replaced it with a girl performing the same pose. Since we only want to generate the video based on motion using prompts, we can select text only here. Note that even if we are not using an image, we still need to upload any image. You can see there is a big text here, right? 
At the same time, select the model we downloaded here. Alright, let's look at the result. The pose follows the reference video, but the entire character is blurred, and the background audio is just noise. And I also tried using an image as a reference. I'm not sure why. I tried several times and got the same result. It seems that this official workflow has some issues. Hopefully, it can be fixed in the next update. Finally, there is another workflow that uses LTX2 to enhance video details. It is very simple to use. Just download the corresponding LoRa, select the video, and click Run. Here, I also use the same archery video as input. Let's look at the result. Well, it directly ran into OOM. So, if you want to enhance video details or upscale to HD, it's better to go back to the Flash VSR model mentioned in the previous episode. Overall, LTX2 Hello, provides a new way to generate video and audio together. It is very fast, supports low VRAM, and is truly amazing. The overall video quality is also very high. However, some specific areas may still require LoRa for further optimization in the future. Being able to run such a powerful model on a home PC is already very satisfying. Alright, that's it for this episode. I'm Smart Vision. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. All resources will be available on my Patreon. See you in the next episode.